promise me that if I don't finish, you guys can't have lunch, so I have your attention. Um, I'm going to talk a little about offline mobile. Um, Akamai, a little introduction to Akamai. We're a uh, content delivery network. If you guys know what content delivery network is, we actually deliver 30% of the world's internet. You got uh, your mobile apps uh, updates down to your video delivery, things like live soccer matches, uh, sport, different sporting events. We have roughly about 200,000 servers worldwide, um, one of the world's global footprints in terms of uh, content delivery. We're also known to be a security company. We've fed off one of the biggest DDoSs uh, in, you know, known to date. And um, you know, we're here today basically in Indonesia always to, to tell you that we have servers in Indonesia as well. But the topic today will be around offline. And uh, just quickly kind of showing our solution sets from cloud networking, uh, working with close with network operators. And uh, one of the key facts is we do about 90,000 live streams to date. 30% roughly goes to about esports and personal broadcastings. A lot come from mobile. So, what's going on with the world? Um, you know, speed's not an issue. Uh, you know, Akamai does a yearly study on the internet speed that goes through our network. We're seeing 23% from, you know, from 2015 to 2016. Our report comes out really shortly. We're looking at another double-digit growth in terms of speed. The biggest issue that we're having today is capacity. Uh, if you look at what we have here at Breakdown, uh, Tech in Asia did a great infographic using our data. I'm um, taking that and re representing it out here. If you look at Indonesia, we're looking at about 5.9 on the web in terms of megabits per seconds, and about, about you know, about 6.9 on mobile. So it's not a bad speed market. Uh, the biggest challenge comes down to the fact that when you look at population, you're looking at the facts that devices have outgrown the human population. And, you know, by 2020, we're looking at roughly about 50 billion devices out there. So ITC did a study around what the issues are. Uh, it's not happening just in the developing countries, but it's also happening in developed countries is the lack of capacity. Google and Facebook have invested in infrastructure uh, that's going in from LA to Hong Kong, and they're basically putting in more capacity that's two to three years away. Now we're looking at Indonesia. What are we looking in terms of how far away in terms of capacity rollout? You're probably looking at probably another five years away. Now as mobile app developers, service providers, game developers, it's not a lot of time to wait. You know, when you're thinking about what users are experiencing and the fact that patience is now very, very thin because of the fact that everybody has mobile devices in the crowd, in our hands, and we expect everything to load instantaneously. Gratification of entertainment, gratification of services, gratification of data is in our, in our palms of our hands. So we'll look at offline trends. What is going on in the market? Entertainment companies from the likes of Netflix, Spotify, one of the early adopters of offline abilities, YouTube in markets like India, Philippines, have also introduced offline. Why? The fact that not knowing when a network's going to be reliable is one of the issues we're facing in today's internet. We're also looking at Google Search having ability to take searches, process them at a later point in time, cache them, so it's available for you at your palm of your fingertips. Again, going to the fact that speed's not an issue. Mobile networks, broadband speeds are getting faster. The challenge is the capacity has not caught up. Thinking about other opportunities on offline, we just last session talked about branding, how brand advertising is you know, an area that I look at. And if you're, looking at, if you're looking at the fact that having someone's full attention, where better to actually place offline ads in people's devices? A good rationale, if you're taking a subway in countries that do have subway and public transportation, having offline ads does one or two things. Being mindful of your consumers. In, in developing countries, data is not cheap. Serving ads actually eat into your data. Can we figure out ways to have offline ads available to them? 
Like myself, I flew in today this morning. Uh, I fly pretty often. Imagine being able to take the opportunity or predict the fact that a user like Vincent is going to get online, offline on airplane mode and have content for me to serve up. Knowing that an app that's free, I don't mind watching, interacting with an ad because of the fact that I have access to my app when I need it, whenever I need it. The rise of cost of consumer attention. We all know this. Um, you know, we talked about earlier, the fact that we're all kind of bombarded with ads today. There's just too much ads. Offline capabilities will actually, actually provide a lot more focus, especially with brand ads. Consumer attention is something on the rise. Harvard Business Studies has done a lot of the fact that can we look for cheaper attention? Can brand ads be something that be, can be looked at on a mobile marketplace? The fact that you have a consumer's attention, like, I, like myself, having your attention before lunch. There's a reason why someone's opened your app, app offline or in a network conditions that's not so good. The fact that you have their attention only premises the fact that you can actually serve brand ads to them. Going back to mindfulness, this is the data that uh, was broken down to the cost of mobile data in Southeast Asia. You look at the first pallet right there, we have one gigabyte of data pricing of $2.84 in Indonesia. You can raise your hand if I'm wrong. Uh, 0.54 cents of what the minimum wage is. For an average Indonesian, you would have to actually work five hours to actually access that. What are the pain points in Southeast Asia? Two things. You look at the three categories, network quality, pricing, 4G LTE. Again, speed's not an issue. Network, connect, network quality is something that's actually uh, you know, surveyed as one of the bigger issues as one and two. Uh, there are some markets like Singapore who care about more speeds. We're a little bit overprivileged, uh, the fact that we, we have pretty good speed connections. But reliability is still an issue, even in countries like Singapore. What are we doing in Akamai? Um, Akamai is looking at trying to get closer to consumers. As a network infrastructure, we do the last miles. We have our network infrastructure that can deliver from two customers in Indonesia. But what we want to do is get even closer. Can we get you know, our SDKs into mobile devices? And that's what we're looking at today, looking at predictive content delivery, looking at two aspects, predictive nature of network, whether or not a user is going to a spotty network condition, whether or not that network, that user is going to have bad network connection that evening, that day, based on the fact that more and more people and devices are going online all the time. Um, reduced data costs, both for content owners, publishers and advertisers, um, in addition to consumers. Um, earlier talking about mobile consumers, especially the fact that data is expensive in this market. So let me talk about you know, the new concept of pre-positioning. What is offline? What is predictive? Imagine little Anna sleeping overnight. She has a stable connection at home over Wi-Fi or people who actually go into the office that would actually connect to something that's a little more stable and they're not paying for it and be able to connect and have content pushed to them. Anna's thinking about the next episode of Game of Thrones and having that content available to them the next day, whether it's the full episode, whether the content provider wants to do that, or whether it's 30% to 40% of that content, why? To prevent offload. If a new episode or a catch-up that's gonna come out for the latest drama in Indonesia, can you actually offload some of that content so that startup time is much faster? The fact that you reduce the capacity because of the fact that you have this hot drama that's gonna be on or available the next day. Uh, I'll have the guys in the back. Can you guys just roll the video to the bookmark? Uh, go in the center? Correct. So what we've done with SDK uh, with the Zalora app is the fact that we actually have content available offline. Uh, we basically simulated it offline. We unplugged the network where the user on the right can actually access, continue to access content and have their offline shopping or when their network actually gets disconnected and still be able to browse the catalog of things that need to shop. So this is an example of Zalora in a commerce app. Think about in-flight 
applications. You want to check your schedule of your, you know, your flight. Um, content. Content before you go um, in airplane mode. So these are some of the things that provide um, solution sets in terms of the offline world and bridging that gap. Again, speed is not an issue. Think about offline opportunities, monetization, instant access for your users. Today, users are not as patient as they once were. You guys hit the next slide. Next slide. So some of the things they can do with the predictive content delivery SDK is one, obviously improve audience engagement, knowing that their app or your service is available to them at any point in time. Two, increase the consumption. The fact that they don't have to worry about access to data uh, at certain points of the day or time and have longer average rates in terms of your, your mobile service. Three is reduce costs. Again, both sides. Delivering content to consumers is not cheap. As a pu content publisher, as an ad network, how do we reduce that cost? You know, being able to deliver content to users um, you know, off peak hours, uh, in addition to the fact that you can actually reduce the cost to the mobile consumers. We have our Watch Now app available on the Apple Play Store for you guys to demo, something to play with and look at. We have uh, Matt, who's standing right there, one of my colleagues that, you know, happy to engage and talk more about this, the SDK. And I'm going to make it a wrap, because I know y'all is hungry. But if you have any questions, I'll be out there during lunch and after lunch. Thank you, everybody. To lunch. Vincent, I'd like to thank you so much. That was an interesting insight. Venkatesh, would you like to present a little token of appreciation for your time and your expertise that you share with us? And of course, the selfie ritual. Oh. You can't miss that. <laughs> Venkatesh, um, so we'd like to thank Vincent Lowe for the interesting insight. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Big round of applause for Vincent. Thank you. Thank you.